We've got a ton to cover in today's video. We're definitely going to get into the specifics of who the best heroes are right now. Bunker's obviously strong, May and Reaper are here in a big way, but a lot more dive than you probably would have expected can also be utilized in the right spot. I'll get into a bunch of examples and explain those interactions as well, but a few caveats to this conversation. First of all, we are going to be peering into the gameplay of the Overwatch League, which of course is played by pros, so not all the strategies we discuss translate perfectly into ranked we'll point that out when it's most important but in any case they're playing on our live patch not the ptr patch which buffed ryan and nerfed orisa a little bit bunch of other changes as well so realistically the rollock they're playing isn't the one we'll ever get on live there's a lot of comps that are getting run in owl that you could just either run multi dps or goats to beat comps like clockwork or may reaper very weak to multiple damage and goats of course well we're just not even going to speak that name ever again because it's dead forever thank you jeff however there's been quite a shocking effect where although all they did was add a roll lock no balance changes to usher it in whatsoever we are getting the most diversity of play that we have ever seen granted the tanks aren't exactly balanced but the supports look basically all equal in power level about as much as you could expect and a ton of dps are really good with a few shining out above the rest but not like in a significant you could never play something else in this case type way in fact quite the opposite as long as the map terrain makes your hero or strategy somewhat viable and there's areas of the map to exploit you can get a variety of things to work right now and we're going to go in to those niche cases in this video as well but first i wanted to start off with the queen ice queen i should say of the meta in may i think most of us already knew that bunker was going to be the best and with that may becomes the best dps and it's going to be a good hero to look at to sort of set the themes of what's good in the meta right now because there's so many strong cooldowns in the game you don't necessarily need max firepower out of may but she's been kind of power crept anyway so she's not even really lacking that either if you play her perfectly but more importantly she has has two ways to interact with the halt hook interaction we went over this with our clockwork vendetta video of course they kind of pioneered this strategy as far as i know where you can use the may wall to interrupt the follow-up of an incoming hook this is even better than trying to do it with diva and if anything this is the core of the meta or as many like to call it the meta too easy of a joke i had to try surrounding the orisa hog and who can get the most out of halt hook or blocking that combo with either may's icicle or her wall now I think a lot of people want to jump the gun with this and say, well, Bunker in May, this for sure is going to be the meta forever, but I want to say this is important to remember, this patch doesn't have the adjustments in it yet, but more importantly, it doesn't have Sigma in it yet. The big secret in all of this is that I don't think Orisa's going to get nerfed anymore, because I think she might not even need it because of how strong Sigma is up against Orisa. The same interaction you can do to block an incoming halt with a May wall, you can do with Sigma's shield easier. Sigma's wonky, hard to use, high skill ceiling and everything, but up against Bunker, he looks insane. So much so, I think there is no way that when the next patch comes around, that Bunker is going to be the top of the meta, and with that, a lot of these other picks are going to fall into place. So characters that are pure Bunker staples are going to see less playtime overall once Sigma is able to siege the castle, so to speak. It's an incredibly strong counter, so almost guaranteed we're going to see some shakeups in that regard. The other DPS hero that I think is surprising a lot of people is the amount of Reaper play getting played by the pros in Owl Week 1. I think Busan downtown is the best map for him, as we're going to see in the gameplay in the background. It's really easy to weave in and out of the team fights getting away safely. And if you think about it, just like May, who's got the escapes for the big cooldowns, Reaper does as well and heals himself, which is the main reason he's getting utilized so much right now. I do believe that if a pro team wanted to, they could counter Reaper by playing things like Farah, McCree. But the problem is, you have to remember, teams are very good and practiced at playing the GOATS meta. Playing Reaper in 2-2-2 follows a lot of the same principles that GOATS teams followed in terms of taking cover, playing to sustain, brawling on the objective it's pretty much just a budget goats play style but of course the reason why we would expect it to be so good is a combination of two things diva getting weaker and since you have to play two tanks there just simply 
isn't really a tank that wants to contest up against Reaper on an objective. They don't exist. We have to remember Reaper's power crept for this new format. He was balanced to be able to deal with the crazy comps that we had in the old format of unrestricted pick. He couldn't really compete with goats or triple DPS. So part of the reason he's seeing so much success is simply because, well, the enemy has to pick two tanks. They don't have the option to put a squishy there to play triple DPS to make him look silly. Well, you always have to play something that he can go at and farm. But of course, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise either, because I already thought Reaper was kind of a crazy pick for the ranked matchmaking meta, where a lot of players just filled into 222 anyway. Doesn't surprise me one bit. Let me just give you the best example to show you what I mean. Here in this team fight, look how low Fitz's health gets down to, but just by having a tank in front of him, a pro player is going to hit the spread perfectly to get maximum damage and maximum lifesteal out of the Reaper, and he just burst heals himself back up to full. It's actually pretty insane. He can turn a team fight back, and we've seen it in this example, or Corey did it a few times in the previous footage. There's just not really a DPS hero that can do that much that quickly and require that little help, at least on control point where you can just go jump on an objective. Him being used on Anubis B, for example, isn't a surprise that's been done many times in the past. I think in Owl, though, this will transition a bit to see more Pharmacy get played, because there's no way a team with a top tier Farah is just going to let May and Reaper stand in the middle of the point without going for Ball and Farah. But if you don't have that personnel, you probably just mirror the pseudo goats composition with May and Reaper instead. Other cool things I noticed is that there was quite a lot of power out of Doomfist, and teams were kind of going at this in two different ways. Here, the Fusion attempt to play max cc six characters with crowd control and they still end up getting dove and losing this team fight it's crazy to see now they do go on to eventually win this round however but doomfist is probably one of the biggest winners in this format because just like reaper if you play soul tank hammond and tracer sombra pharmacy well doom barely has anything to fight right whereas in 222 he almost always has a target to go on making him look like a madman in this format i don't think it's super easy mode though it does also require Require you to be really good with him, obviously. And so far, at least, the mass CC at the highest levels of play hasn't been working out too well. Pro teams are just too good at dive engages, so usually the enemy has to go for mobility to dodge the Doom Fist rather than overloading on CC to catch him. The problem is if you play him well enough, he's just gonna guarantee a kill. And sometimes you just can't afford to have a death and expect to be able to scrap out a fight. Otherwise, we saw a lot of other cool things as long as the map allowed for it. Any map that was like a long line of sight, you can guarantee you're going to continue to see the bunker double sniper setups. But my favorite map to watch right now is Anubis, because we've seen every DPS in the game basically get played here due to the way that the map is built. There's so much cover and flank routes and high ground that you can play Farah, Doomfist, Genji, Junkrat, which this aspect of the new format has me the most excited. Map design matters more just about than it ever has, I believe. And if I'm right and Sigma shakes up the bunker meta, and as long as the Rhine buffs are good enough, we may actually see a incredibly diverse meta. So much so that maps can be the limiting factor that allows for variations in play. This would be a dream for Overwatch because as Jeff said, he doesn't want hero bans. They're fully required in MOBA games because you only play on one map. Whereas in Overwatch, the map design all of a sudden starts to look way more relevant now that the team comps don't have every tool at their disposal at one time. You have to make sacrifices when you can't overload on multiple tanks and supports. And what that does is make openings for individual teams and players to be creative. At least currently right now, the Vancouver Titans have been able to pocket Haxel like they've done in their entire careers as Runaway, by the way. Nothing new for them. And to do so, they have ran a lot of Ana and Mercy, giving Genji the double pocket so that the stacking damage boost effect means his blade swings are one hit kills. Now granted, to some degree, strategies like this may prove to be inefficient as compared to others, because let's say this play guarantees them to win some fights, right? The question is, up against other top tier strats, does it win enough fights over the course of an entire map? And if it ever doesn't work, for whatever reason, like if enemy Lucios get really strong at using sound barrier to diminish a big percentage of the blade's value or whatever answer comes up, somber hack, whatever, this kind of strat may fall to the wayside to 
things that are more efficient. But my assumption is anyway, that even if you do that, it won't result in one comp that covers all your bases at the same time. Whatever comp you dream up that does that to beat Vancouver has its own counters as well, which is the ideal place to be in Overwatch, I think. The last example I want to bring up is Farah, who's a character that can struggle in ranked matchmaking, but I think it's mostly due to both the Farah's play and the teamwork around the Farah. Although there's a million things that can shoot up at Farah and destroy her, the best Farahs in Overwatch League are farming, thanks to their insane movement to use cover to just never give the enemy hit scans a line of sight until their team's already dead, or dive bombing onto targets, making their lives miserable. And this is kind of what I mean. There's enough characters in the game that do something well enough with the right map terrain that I think you can just pick it, force the enemy to deal with it, and then all of a sudden we have a map meta on our hands, pretty much guaranteeing that we're going to see a forced rotation of counterpicking going on. This has me really excited to get into the next patch, but I won't go too much more in depth because a lot of this could be subject to change, which is why I didn't make any hard and fast rules about 222 or the patch or anything because what the pros are experimenting with isn't really going to fully take form and the playoff patch with Sigma in it near and around the actual roll queue launch is going to be way different than what they're playing with now but it's a glimpse into how that new format is structured and I like what I'm seeing it's working way better than I could have dreamed allowing for players to feel comfortable on their comfort picks and allowing for the map to play a bigger role in determining what's good rather than seeing goats get played on some widow dominated maps which always brought a tear to my eye but that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you did enjoy it and find it useful if you did please be sure to leave it a like it really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content and if you haven't already please subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live link to the description is our twitter where we tweet out news updates and dank memes that's been it for me i've been frito for your overwatch we'll see you guys next time